This guy is good. He's always in uh, postseason form. He's Woody Page around the horn, panelist, sports columnist, who uh, joins us. Uh, good morning, Woody. How is morale in Denver? I think people are in a moment in morning of mourning because they felt like uh, that the Nuggets could come back and make this more of a series uh, last night. And uh, I heard what you were saying about uh, what the Nuggets did last night. But I, I think they gained the respect of, A, the Lakers, <laughs> LeBron James specifically, and uh, a nation of the NBA because uh, people before thought, you know, it's a cute little team. And that's kind of what they've been, you know, they're young and they're cute and they they uh, have resilience and they come back and, uh, yeah, they're going to get up against the Lakers and just get blown out. And they've proven that uh, this is a team that uh, is not going to win this year, but next year people are going to say, ooh, and this could be a destination, Dan, uh, that people in the past didn't want to go to places like Milwaukee or Denver or Utah. And I think that when you uh, have a showing like you do in the, in the playoffs that uh, people going, yeah, that's a team I'd like to join. So I, th I think that's good for the NBA. If you had had a Miami heat, uh, Denver nuggets, NBA finals, the, the, the ratings, which is so important to the NBA wouldn't, wouldn't be certainly as high as the Lakers and the Celtics. But uh, I think both the Miami heat and the Denver nuggets uh, have proven that they can play with the big boys. What did you make of Frank Vogel sort of lobbying for more free throws? It's in I particular, thought that was LeBron. Crap. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was real crap. Okay, you're the Lakers. So you got to go groveling to the NBA for a guy that is one of the two or three greatest players of all time. Hey, he needs to get to the free throw line. Well, it worked. And so Mike Malone, after last night's game, said, uh, you know, we're, we're going through the proper channels and have them look at our film now. So I think the series, uh, the, is not over. I think the Nuggets could win another game. Uh, it's going to require, and you were talking about Jokic, but Jokic really needs to come out and play and not get in foul trouble as he has twice in the series. Yeah, those uh, that fourth and fifth foul, that that changed the, the series, or changed the game, I think. And then LeBron saying he wanted to guard Jamal Murray down the stretch as well was, uh, was kind of interesting. But Jamal Murray, I think, uh, he and a couple of members of the Miami Heat, those are the guys that the bubble has really been beneficial to them. Devin Booker, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, the guy scored 70 points in a game. So, but Jamal, what is it about Jamal Murray? If you were going to describe his style for somebody who hadn't seen him, Woody, how would you describe him? Yeah, 23 years old from Canada. You, I, I would just say the best uh, guard from Canada since Steve Nash, <laughs> because how many Canadian guards are there really in the world? But, uh, the thing about it is people tend to forget that he's 6'4". He looks like he's smaller. People tend to think of point guards now at 6'1". But he's got speed, he's got size, and he's got toughness. You saw what happened when he went to the basket late in the game, and he didn't get a call whatsoever. Yeah. And, and I think you know me well enough that I'm not a homer, but I'm thinking, my goodness, the, 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 uh, the Lakers begged for LeBron to get to the free throw line. And he did. Why didn't they just start the game and say, LeBron, you get 10 <laughs> free throws in a row, and then we'll start the game. And now we can move on with it. But uh, Jokic <laughs> doesn't go to the line. Murray doesn't go to the line. But to describe him as a guy, and you talked about it, the bubble has been the best thing in the world that's ever happened to him because people discovered that there's a guy out there uh, <laughs> that actually – can play this game and play it extremely well because he has the ability to shoot the three pointer 64% of the playoffs that he, that he's got a mid range jumper, which has disappeared in the NBA. He's got a great mid range jumper and he goes to the basket. And we saw uh, a move last night. That's Michael Jordan esque when he went to the basket. Uh, and that, that would be one of the two or three best plays we've seen. I mean, there've been last second shots that have won games, but that was uh, maybe the best, uh, around the basket play that we've seen throughout the entire playoffs. Oh, I think he's been discovered. It's like uh, Columbus discovering America. Hello, there are people that live here in America, but people have discovered a guy that actually existed for, for three years that was playing like that, particularly early in the playoffs when he scored 50. When did the Nuggets, where did the Nuggets stand with the other, 
like the Broncos, Avalanche, Rockies, Nuggets. What's the pecking order there in Denver? A third until last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the Broncos will always be number one. The NFL is the number one game. Uh, the Rockies, who haven't really accomplished much, uh, four-game World Series against the Red Sox in 2007, but the Rockies and then the Nuggets – and then the Avalanche, and oddly enough, the Avalanche have won two Stanley Cups and really uh, were positioned to win another Stanley Cup this year. But I think that uh, the city of Denver is in good shape in regard to you know people following the teams. The Broncos suck <laughs> this year. And uh, Wait, you've you know, given up on the Broncos already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How long do you have to wait, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually wait till mid-season, Woody. No, I, I, you know, as a, as a sports columnist for most of my life and, and, you know, being on ESPN, whatever it is I do there. Uh, but uh, yeah, see, uh, Jokic is the joker. I'm known in Denver as the clown. So <laughs> that's always been my reputation. But you need to get out in front of these things, Dan. You know that from your career. Oh, you got to have a hot take. This is your hot take. So after week two, the the uh, Broncos sunk. Yeah, it's it's a real possibility if they lose to the Bucks and Brady this year uh, this weekend, uh, they go to the Jets next Thursday night. Adam Gase, if he doesn't beat the Broncos, he's gone. <laughs> he's, he's fired. So uh, I I think they've got the Chiefs coming up twice. We've heard of them. They've got uh, a, a trip to New England, and we've seen what the Patriots are doing with Cam Newton. They've got uh, Drew Brees and the Saints coming to town soon. This is a team that's probably going to be at midseason when they have their bye week. They'll probably be one and six, two and five, something like that. So, I, I yes, I've already written them off, but that's what I do. I write and I write <laughs> off. You're going to sign off now as we say goodbye. Uh, Woody, great to see you. When, uh, when are you back on Around the Horn? Uh, today. Ooh. In about uh, 45 minutes. But uh, just for the world, uh, we're going back into our studios. I've been stuck in here like the, Mount of, the Count of Monte Cristo for six <laughs> months, and we're going back into studios next week. So we'll be back to where we were with four panelists and Tony Reale and his uh, Conan O'Brien hair. Well, I was going to say, your hair looks better than Tony's, but then – most people's hair looks better than Tony. Oh, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing well for a man that's 104 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I look good for somebody who's under four. Actually, I'm 74, so <laughs> I'll go with that. Keep stirring it up, Woody. Great to talk to you as always. Thank you. Say hello to the guys for me. I will. Woody Page, ESPN Around the Horn. He's 104.